Hi, everyone. How are you all doing today? Good. Everyone okay? All right. So uh, let's take a look at this new concept of rational exponents. When we've been graphing exponents, has ever, anyone been wondering, wow, all of the x values that I'm choosing are integer values. So I only have integer exponents that I have to evaluate. But then I go ahead and boldly put a smooth curve in between all those points. So there must be some meaning to those inter in between values of x when you have values in between the points. And how would we ever evaluate those? Well, today we're going to take a look. So a rational exponent, they're written in this form, x to the m over n, right? And when you have something like this, you can actually rewrite that as a radical, and it goes this way, right? And one important uh, restriction on this is, of course, n can't be 0 because, well, this is a fraction, and we can't have 0 as the bottom of a fraction. But over here, similarly, if I asked you to find the 0 root of 2, that doesn't make any sense. That's like saying, go find me a number that when multiplied by itself 0 times gives you 2. Well, wait, you told me never to multiply by that number, so how would it ever multiply to 2? It would just be 1, because anything to the 0 is 1, so that doesn't make sense. Let's take a look here. This is how one of the skills that we want to develop today, one of our learning goals, is you want to be able to go between these two forms. Okay, And the two forms look like this. All right, One is the uh, rational exponent, and that's over here, x to the a over b. And if I have something like that, and I want to rewrite it as a radical, what this is telling me to do, well, let's break this down with our power laws, actually. This is the same thing as saying x to the 1 over b raised to the power a. Notice that with my power laws, I would be multiplying this a by this 1 over b to create a over b. So this is true. And then what we want to learn today is that x to the 1 over b is the same thing as saying find me the b root of x. And then go ahead and raise that to the power a. This is my preferred way of uh, writing it. I don't like writing it this way. It is equivalent to this, b to the x to the a power. These are the same. I find I have more luck working with this form than I do working with that form. So I like writing it with the a exponent on the exterior and the b expo b uh, the b root on the interior. The b root, yeah, really awkward way of saying something, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, when we talk about a b root or like say a third root or a fifth root, are people comfortable with that idea? Like if I ask you, what is the fifth root of thirty-two? That's a strange way of writing thirty-two. There we go. Fifth root of thirty-two. What do I mean by the fifth root? Yeah, so uh, so Isaac has this, uh, some, some Isaac impersonator has this. It's two. Why? What is the fifth root? What is the meaning of that whole notation system? Let's get real clear on this. This is saying, go find me the number. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, two to the five is the fact family for this. The same way that like, uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. That's what we call a fact family in math, right? Uh, 8 uh, plus 13 is 21, so 21 minus 13 is 8, and 21 minus 8 is 13. It's fact family, okay? We also have exponent fact families and root, nth root fact families. 2 to the 5 is 32, so the fifth root of 32 is, is, is uh, 2. Yeah, so that's a fact family. And so that's what this, this kind of type of notation is meaning. But now we will know that 32 to the 1 fifth is equal to 2. Okay, these are the same. These are the same. Different ways of writing the same thing. Okay? Let's carry on. Ideas there or carry on? Carry on. Let's go. So we want to be able to not only convert this to radical form, but also evaluate what it is. So if I want to write this as a radical, what I will do is I will say, well, it's clearly uh, equal to 
27 to the 1 third raised to the power 2, which is equal to the third root of 27, and then I'm going to square it. And so that is uh, now going from rational exponent form to the radical form. Now let's evaluate it. What is 27 to the 2 thirds equal? 9. Now why, you ask? Well, the third root of 27 is 3, and then we square it. So 9. Sorry? Not 1 third. Not 1 third of 27. It's 27 to the 1 third means go find me the number that when I cube it gives me 27. Oh. Okay. So this is a set of instructions that says go find me the number. These here inside the brackets are both identical sets of instructions that say go find me the number that when raised to the third power gives me 27. Yeah. So let me show you what it looks like on my calculator here, and then I can help you find it on your calculator. Mine is the, I have to go into the second function and notice this button here, the y root of x. Can you see it there? Yes. I'm afraid I can't zoom. I don't know why I can't zoom this, but it's just right there. Y, the y root of x. It's a button that looks like this. It might be, um, sometimes you will see that, that there. Like that is a common way of writing it, Raf. So where's oh, he really gone? Today. He has to work later today, so we'll let him get some rest. Uh, <laughs> so that's what it might look like on yours. Another way I've seen this written on calculators is like this, like with a box there. Okay, and I'm gonna give you a little math confession. I never use it. I never use. Well, I very rarely use that button on a calculator. But is it even on? Instead. Instead of using that, I will use this button. Just my x to the y button. I use my x to the y button, and instead of doing the third root of 27, I raise 27 to the power of 1 third. And I just, you just have to remember to put that in brackets when you're raising to that power. Okay. Is that the, uh... the y root button? Yes. Absolutely, a calculator will have that button. There. Oh, it's this button. No. Yeah, it's this button. Oh, that's, that's, that's yeah, to the power of whatever. Yeah. So then, a root to the power or something? No, I would, I mean, like, I would do it to the power of one-third instead of doing the nth root thing. Oh, yeah. Your nth root is probably the second function of that one. Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, to the, to the x, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got it. So, okay. So, let me show you how this looks in Desmos. I need a like a button. Let me show you this in Desmos little little thing. So let's take a look. I think I have it here. No, I don't. That's a volleyball court. Let's go here. Desmos. And I want to show you this cool function. This is 27 to the X. Whoa, it goes up fast, doesn't it? So let me show you Y values up to about 30. And I'll show you X values between 1 and negative 1. All right, so let's take a look at this here. So here is 27 to the x. If I look at values like for where y equals 3 or y equals 9, I want you to notice something about the x values here. What do you notice about that x value? And this x value here. This one just gets squared. No, that's such a bad one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what's that value there for x that gives an output of 9 for this function, 27 to the x? There's 2 thirds here, just what we just evaluated. Here's 1 third. So 27 to the 1 third, notice that that is one of these points here that joins all the way there to, you know, 27 at the 1. It's 27 there. 27 to the 1 is 27. And then it just grows so fast after that. But along the way, there's all these other values of x that you can still evaluate. 
And notice that the cube root and the cube root squared follow this exponential curve and complete it nicely and smoothly. Okay? So that's um, what you see in between the points here. Carry on? Carry on. Okay. So that's equal to 9. Now let's go radical form to rational form. If I see something in radical form like that, I, I a little bit want to rearrange it right away because I like seeing it as a single exponent. I don't like breaking it up. So I can write this as, well, I remember that if I have like the b root of x to the a, that's equal to x to the a over b. So in this case, the fourth root of 16 raised to the power 3, notice I write it this way, I don't write it that way, but they're equivalent, is equal to 16 to the 3 over 4. And what is that, everyone? 16 to the 3 over 4. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing? Yeah, I have my answers. Your answers? I my answers. Oh, great. That's fantastic. Thanks. Kevin, you want to grab a seat somewhere? If you make yourself comfortable. So, um, uh, yeah. So, what is 16 to the 3 over 4? It is 8. Yeah, cool. Because we can reimagine that as uh, 16 to the 1 over 4 meaning I need to find something that when raised to the power 4 gives me 16, that number is 2. And so this is 2 raised to the power 3, which is 8. Okay. Cool, right? Oh, really? I skipped too many steps for you? Let's talk about it. So this one, are you comfortable with rearranging it that way? Um, sort of, I guess, yeah. OK. This number here is like the, the yeah, one yeah, on top, five. this numerator. This is B, that's the one on the bottom. Right, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So I just use that to bloop them there. Oh, I okay. get So that okay. one always is on the bottom? Yeah, this yeah. one is going to be the denominator. This one's going to be the numerator of the rational so it's exponent. just like flipping um, the equation. Yeah, it's, re it's writing it in the new form. You're, instead of writing it in the radical form, let's write it with the rational exponent. Right. And that's what we get. And then we find 16 to the 1 over 4. That means the fourth root of 16. The, the fourth root of 16. The number which, when raised to the power 4, gives you 16 is the answer to that little mini question. Right. 2. And then we raise 2 to the power 3 is 8. Right. Good. So carry on. Olivia, can I keep going? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Now, the solving. Let's solve these. 36 to the 3 over 2 equals 36 to the 1 half raised to the power 3. 36 to the 1 half. What do I mean by raising something to the power 1 half? You raise it by 1? No, we don't raise it by 1. It's the same thing as taking the square root of that thing. So what number raised to the power 2 gives you 36? 6. So this question is the same thing as saying 6 to the 3, which is equal to, who's got it ready? Two sixteen. Yeah, there we go. Two sixteen. Wait. So could you write it? Um, like I could. The square root thing. Yeah, I could write it as square root of thirty six raised to the power three. These would be identical. But you just different ways write, of writing it. You don't need to write the two. The two is hiding in there. But it would be the same thing if I had the two there. Like yes. If I had the two. Now, not showing this two is a case of like the same thing as like me saying I'm. 42 one times one years right. old plus zero divided by one. Yeah. You know, we don't usually show that two in the square root sign, but it is there. If you see a two, it's just your square root. And in fact, if you look at the calculator that's on my computer here, it's uh, square root button does have the two in there. See the two there? That is the square root button. Okay, so that's that one. Let's try 27 to the four over three. Who knows that one? Not me. Um, he did. Yeah. 
27 to the 1 over 3 to the 4. Yeah, that will be one way of breaking it down in the first step. So let's go ahead. We'll get another color here. Uh, oh, green. Go, go do green? Okay. You ask and you shall receive. So this is 27 to the 1 over 3 raised to the power 4, which is equal to, what's the third root of, yeah, you got it. What's the third root of 27? 80. Well, 81 is a final answer, but I want to break it down for people that aren't quite there yet. Yeah, so 27 to the one-third is equal to 3, and then we're going to raise that to the power 4. Okay. 27 to the one-third is, go ahead and find me the cube root of 27. Like, I give you a cube. I give you 27 sugar cubes arranged as a cube, and you have to find what's the side length of that cube. Well, it's three sugar cubes on a side. 3 by 3 by 3 is 27. And then you go ahead and raise that to the power 4. So you got 81 at the end of the day. So people comfortable getting to the end of the day here? 81, 27 to the 4 over 3? Yeah, there's a few ways to do it. Now recognize that 27 to the 4 over 3, that's bigger than 27. We're expecting a bigger number than 27. We're expecting a number a lot smaller than 27 squared. Because 27 to the 2 is an awfully big number. And 2 is a fair bit bigger than 4 over 3. 4 over 3 is only one third the way between 1 and 2. So we expect a number not nearly as big as 27 squared, which would be plenty bigger than 600. It's 7, so it's 729, right? Yeah, it is 729 because it's 3 to the 6. There you go. So, shall I invent some examples and we can solve them? Yeah, because I'm just breaking it down with my power of a power law there. Brody, maybe I should expand on that idea a little bit. Because here, if I just evaluate, it's a power of a power, so I multiply 4 by a third, and I get 4 thirds. But by breaking it apart using power of a power rule backwards, I can see that I want the third root of 27, and then raise that number to the power of 4. And then you just have one. Note that you could do it the other way, and I think you're a maniac if you do. You could do 27 to the 4, and then find the third root of that, which is craziness. Why would you, would it be valid to say instead it is to like put the numerator as one and kick out the original numerator? Yeah, and like move it outside the bracket and then evaluate each independently, yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's do the negative examples. Let's do the negative examples and then we'll invent some new examples. 64 to the 1 over 2, but it's negative. The but it's negative part, Lexi, is always just the Downton Abbey, kick it from upstairs, downstairs, or kick it from downstairs, upstairs. It's always what the negative does. Yeah, the negative is good. So this is equal to 1 over 64 to the 1 over 2. So 1 over 64 would be 65. So I'm going to evaluate this negative exponent first and just kick that whole base to the bottom of the fraction. Now, what's 64 to the 1 half? Minus 63. No, it's 32. No. You multiplied by 1 half. Is that in a set of instructions there saying to multiply 64 by 1 half? No. But, Caden, do you mind if I made, make an example out of you? Caden just made a very frequent error that many of you will make, and then you will be like, I can't find my error. He said 64 to the 1 half is 32. And this you will, you can see how you could easily do that. But this is not a set of instructions saying multiply. This is a set of instructions saying raise 64 to the power 1 half. Raising something to the power 1 half is the same thing as finding its square root. So 64 would be... So 8. Oh, 8. Yeah, that's right. So this, at the end of the day, is equal to 1 eighth. Okay. And then you can punch it on your calculator and see. Watch. Here we go. 64 to the, I'm going to use my x to the y button and put in 0.5, but it's negative, is equal to 0 0.125. That's 1 eighth. 
Yeah, why couldn't you just do that right off the bat? Why couldn't I just punch the whole thing in the calculator? Yeah. Because I want to understand how to work with rational exponents. Yeah. Oh, I see. And if I understand how to work with rational exponents, then I have this new skill, and I have a new understanding of what it means to exponentiate to decimals or to rational numbers. I have a, like a, a penetrating understanding of that topic. It's not just plug and chug on calculator for me. So I, I have understanding. Having understanding is preferable. Second, it allows you to do things like this. I'm going to skip that second example for a moment and go to this idea here. Let's say I see something like this, and I want to teach a computer to solve that and to solve for multiple values of x. If I know that I can rewrite those as rational exponents and then just add the exponents together, get x to the 3, do you agree that x to the 3? Is a lot simpler than that expression. <laughs> and a, calc oh, that a computer could process things with that a lot faster than it could process things with that. But these are equivalent expressions. And I can only really make them equivalent if I go through, going through rational exponents allows me to do that very simply, very straightforwardly. Okay, let's carry on with the other example here. One eighth to the one third, but it's negative. One eighth to the negative one third, you got it? Should we do the negative exponent first? That's yeah, just two. Good. Good. So two. Wait, that's just two. Yeah. People are annoyed with us, Isaac. Uh, let's do the negative exponent first. This will be equal to eight to the one third. Remember, the negative exponent just flips your base. So do that. And do that first and tidy it up. And then eight to the one third. Well, we could write that as the third root of eight, which you might recognize as two. Yeah, there you go. Which is the number that when cubed gives you eight. Oh, that's two. So that's that's how you do those. Eight is two. Eight is two. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing that this allows you to do is it opens up a new inverse operation that you can use when you need to solve for the base of some kind of exponential function. If you don't know the growth factor, you can use raising both sides of an equation to the same reciprocal exponent. Okay. So to use this, you need to be able to quickly identify, what's the reciprocal of 3 over 2? 2 over 3. What's the reciprocal of 4? 1 over 4. What's the reciprocal of 1 half? 2. Yeah, good. So those are the reciprocals of those numbers. So if I have to solve for x here, if you can look at that and tell me it's 2, that's great. It's also negative 2, but uh, yeah, that's it's... beside the point. Yeah. One thing that I can do here is I can raise both sides of this equation to the 1 over 4. Why? Well, because then I'll use power of a power law to find that x to the 4 over 4 mm -hmm. is equal to 16 to the 1 over 4. And I should probably have a plus minus here. I need a plus minus because the numerator is even. If the num sorry, the denominator is even. If the denominator is ever even, I need a plus minus. Yeah. But uh, don't worry. You're only going to be solving for positive growth factors in this course. So it's just plus one. It's always po always positive in grade 11. Don't worry about it We're too much right now. When you um, then yeah. You change so notice that we're using power of a power here. So we multiply those powers. 4 over 4 is just 1. So you have x is equal to the fourth root of 16. It's just two. So that's how you can use uh, raising both sides of an equation to a, a rational exponent. Lauren? Um, do we have to accept the four? Can I just take the four and put it in like square root, like four square root x? Four ah, so you're saying if I have x to the four is equal to, let's say, 81, and your process is to do the fourth root like that? Are you trying to? Is that what you do, Lauren? I, like, if, if you like to keep the x on the other side, one. Yeah, but and I just got that. <laughs> okay, let me rewrite this question. x to the 4 equals 16, and what do you do? Um, I just, like, down below, I just did 4 square root x equals 4 square root 16. Just to revise. 4 square root x. Sorry, I don't understand. 
Oh, this? Wait, like oh, that's not four square root. That's the fourth root of x. You understand what I mean? Yes. Yeah, so the way you read that is you're taking the fourth root of both sides. Lauren, what you're doing is identical to what I'm doing. Okay, so I don't have to do it. Like, can I do it? You don't have to do it this way. However, doing it this way gives you a powerful tool for solving things like this. Okay? So over for this one, let's take a look at that one and how it's just a new way of doing the same thing, but it allows you to do it in one line instead of two lines where you might make a mistake if you do two lines. Why let's take a look here. To the one fourth? Because yeah. I know that uh, if I raise things to the reciprocal exponent, yeah. the reciprocal of four is one fourth. So it's raised both sides to oh, the so one you're fourth. To get rid of the four. So it gets rid of the exponent around my uh, variable here. Right. Makes it x to the one. And so I can solve. It's just, oh, so it's the same thing as yeah. square root. The same thing Lauren has here, but she just uses the fourth root. But over uh, here, Lauren, if I have x to the three over two is equal to twenty-seven, and I'm about to write on this with a whiteboard marker. My little stupid thing is here. There we go. My stylus. All right. So let's do this one x to the 3 over 2, and then that's equal to 27. Let's raise both sides to the reciprocal of 3 over 2. What's the reciprocal of 3 over 2? Raise both sides to the 2 over 3. See how that will clear my exponent in one line? So that's the advantage of this method. You don't have to do it that way, but you can, and it's easy. Uh, then you have x to the 6 over 6, which is x to the 1, is equal to 27 to the 2 thirds. What's 27 to the 2 thirds? 9. Good. People are getting it. x equals 9. And then you can check on your calculator. Is 9 to the 3 halves 27? Well, let's rewrite it. 9 to the 3 over 2 is equal to 9 to the 1 half raised to the power 3. Notice that it's working the other direction, right? This will give us 3 to the 3, which is equal to 27. So it worked out. See? Cool, right? I think so. Let's keep going. Uh, yeah, so that is that is everything. Uh, do you need to see more examples, or do you want to try these textbook problems? There's some textbook problems. Or shall I show you how using that negative exponent trick could solve some of those exponential problems from yesterday. No, it's the same. It finishes at the same time. Do people want me to keep talking through some of these examples or do you want some time to practice in the textbook for four minutes? Just keep talking. Okay, I like Fisher's idea. I'm just going to keep talking. So, over here, um, this was a problem... Uh, some of you solved it, but it's tricky, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's take a look at how we can simplify it a little bit. So we have our A is our initial amount, is 500 bacteria. Our T is time. We know after nine hours, things have grown. Um, so we have the population at time, sorry, not at time T, at time nine. is going to be equal to 1,500, all right? So let's take a look. Our population at time t is equal to 500, which is our initial amount, multiplied by some unknown growth factor raised to the time t, okay? We know that this rises to 1,500 when t is equal to 9. So let's do this. Divide both sides by 500. Try and isolate your, your growth factor as much as possible. And then you get 3 is equal to B raised to the power 9. Okay? And now, what we can do here is raise both sides to the power 1 over 9. And to find that 3 to the 1 over 9 is equal to our growth factor. Oh, we're just canceling it out, right? Yeah. So B is equal to 3 to the 1 over 9. That's our growth factor. Now, here's another thing that we can observe. The tripling time 
of this population of bacteria, the time required for it to triple is nine hours, right? How many tripling times will there be in three days? Eight, because there's 72 hours in three days. The population of bacteria should triple eight times. Okay, this announcement, CCI, but we do have an update on the junior boys football score. At this time, we are up 14 to nothing. So, go on. So, the answer to this question will be 500 multiplied by 3 raised to the power 8. So, 1.1. It will triple 8 times. Yeah. It will triple eight times. Oh, uh, you would want to uh, find me the, it says how many bacteria exist. It's that number. That number happens to be equal to 500 multiplied by three to the eight. Well, yeah, they'll do like find your way to the answer. And the more like you have a understanding of this question, the better. Um, three to the one over nine happens to be something like 1.29, I think. I think it grows by about 29% every hour. Wait, where do you get eight? Eight? Yeah. There's 72 hours in three days. That's eight nine hour periods. Eight nine hour periods. 72 divided by nine is eight. So that means it will triple its value eight times. Three to the eight. So then how do we figure out how much of this happens in three days? Oh, uh, you would answer this question here. Or use this function, um, p to the t, where t is a number of hours, is equal to 500 multiplied by 3 to the 1 over 9 to the 72. Thank you, Megan. Let me just turn this video off and I'll chat with you some minute.